Hello, my name is Denis Stradi from the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering at University of Nevada, Reno. I will be talking about the damage to highway bridges due to the Kumamoto earthquake in April 2016. Uh, a reconnaissance survey was conducted on July 11 to 14, uh, 2016, sponsored by the Federal Highway Administration. Members of the FHWA reconnaissance team was Sheila Duwadi from FHWA, Ron Bromenschenkel from Caltrans, Jim Cuthbertson from Washdot, and Ian Buckle, David Sanders, and myself from University of Nevada, Reno. I would like to thank the FCOC Engineering Research Institute and the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering at UNR uh, which sponsored my trip. Uh, the hosts uh, of the uh, FHWA team in Japan was the National Institute for Land and Infrastructure Management of Japan, otherwise NILIM, and the Public Works Research Institute, PWRI. Uh, just to give a brief overview of the uh, Kumamoto earthquake, um, a foreshock uh, with magnitude 6.2 occurred on April 14, 2016, and this uh, ground motion caused minor damage to bridges. However, a main shock with a magnitude of 7.0 on April 16 uh, caused a major damage to bridges, and I'll be talking about this damage in subsequent slides. As informed by Neelim and PWRI, during the Kumamoto earthquake, 182 bridges were damaged. Most of the damaged bridges were along the Futagawa Fault. During the reconnaissance survey, uh, 12 bridges in total were surveyed. As can be seen uh, in the um, picture below, the bridges uh, that the team visited were located in uh, three different um, parts of Kumamoto Prefecture. The first location included bridges along the Kyushu Expressway. The second location uh, included bridges close to Nishihara village. And the third location was in uh, the Aso area. As you can see in the sketch here, uh, the, um, the bridges were relative that were surveyed were relative close to the Futagawa Fault, which is shown with um, a black line. Unfortunately, recorded motions uh, at the location of the bridges, at the exact location, do not exist. However, the closest seismographs were located in Ishihara village and Mashiki town. Just to put things into perspective uh, and have an idea of the um, ground motions, uh, this slide shows four uh, accelerations and velocities at Mashiki town and uh, Nishihara village, which were obtained from uh, from the website of professors Iwata from Kyoto University. And it's, it's interesting to see that uh, the accelerations in the two direction were 0 0.79 to 0 0.84 G. And there was also a significant vertical component of acceleration 0 0.68 G. It can be clearly seen that there were uh, near fault velocity pulses in both, uh, in both locations. And actually, Mashiki Town record had a different frequency uh, content with lower frequencies indicating a softer soil profile than the one in Ishihara village. I will start by uh, describing and discussing the damaged br bridges uh, on the Kyushu Expressway. The first bridge is the Kyamagao Bridge. This bridge was constructed in 1976 and was partially retrofitted in the period of 2005 and 2007. Uh, as you can see in the plan view, there are two parallel bridges uh, running north and south, and they are slightly curved horizontally. There is a total of 32 spans with 867 meters total length, and there were continuous two span and three span segments. It's a composite bridge deck with four steel uh, girders and cross frames, and it had vertical and battered piles uh, with lengths between 29 and 39 meters. The operator of the bridge was Nexco was Japan. So what happened here is that the continuous segment 
uh, between peers 10, 11, and 12 had witnessed significant longitudinal displacement towards the north, which resulted in an opening of the gap at pier 12, which can be seen in the photo below, as well as on lateral displacement causing misalignment of the spans. It seemed that at pier 11 there was increased there were increased inertia uh, forces and moments uh, causing uh, damage of the pier 11 itself as well as the bearing connections of the adjacent uh, piers as well. As can be seen on this slide there is uh, this is pier 11 and there is significant permanent rotation, permanent rotation and um, tilting. Uh, there was, if we look closer, there was actually damage uh, at the connection of the pier to the pile cap, which resulted in a gap of approximately two and a half inches. Apart from the damage at the pier 11, there was also damage in the bearing connections at all piers and typical damage is shown on the two photos below. Uh, as can be seen here, um, the, uh, the bearing connection uh, the, the bearing connection to the girder seemed to have failed uh, and that was probably due to the fact that uh, there was increased friction and the bearing did not distribute, did not act as, as an actual pin but it might have locked up, attracting larger inertia forces than expected. So these larger forces actually damaged the connection and allowed for the deck to uh, offset, to shift towards the north significantly, causing damage on the girder itself because now the, uh, the stiffener of the girder is not anymore located at the location of the, of the bearing itself. Apart from the damage in the bearing connection, uh, there was also damage in the pin itself uh, of the bearing. So in both cases, the one of one of the assumed reason is that of the failure was increased friction and possible locking up of the bearings. The next bridge that the team uh, surveyed along the Kyushu Expressway was the Akitsugao Bridge. This bridge was again constructed in 1976 as the Kyamagao Bridge. It uh, has four spans with a total length of 121 meters and it's composite with stilai girders. Slightly skewed bridge with again vertical and butter piles with the same operator being Nexco West Japan. So this bridge again, similar to the Yamagao bridge, had significant uh, longitudinal um, offset which caused failure of the bear of the friction bearings as well as damage on the back wall uh, and you can see the damage here on the top here that actually uh, significant failure of the slab of the slab of the back wall and then crackings here indicated that there was impact of the superstructure on the abutment back wall the last bridge surveyed on the Kyushu Expressway was the Higashibaru Bridge. This bridge was constructed in 1971. It had three spans with a total length of 47.3 meters. Uh, it had uh, a reinforced concrete hollow uh, slab deck. And the interesting thing is that uh, at the piers there were uh, rocking columns. Um, by the time the team arrived in Japan for the reconnaissance trip, the bridge had already been retrofitted. However, based on the information um, provided from our hosts, this bridge had significant damage in the shear keys, as can be seen on the top pictures, uh, and residual displacement of rocking columns. The retrofitting approach that uh, the company followed here was to encapsulate the uh, displaced rocking columns into uh, very rigid uh, pier walls going from a flexible concept to a very rigid concept they also strengthen the shear keys as it can be seen on uh, on the bottom right picture the second group of bridges that the team uh, visited was located in nishihara area the first bridge is the kirihata ohashi bridge 
This bridge was constructed in 2001, so it was relatively new. It was a horizontally curved continuous eye girder steel bridge oriented from northwest to southeast and it had a skew abutment at A2. It had overall five spans with a total length of approximately 265 meters and it had deep foundations, shafts at piers 1 and 4 and cast in place piles at piers 2 and 3. In this particular location, uh, as shown in the top and bottom uh, pictures, uh, extensive uh, landslide and slope instability uh, occurred, affecting the performance of the bridge. This extensive landslide caused significant offset of the bridge deck, which was observed at the abutments as well as the pier locations. Actually, at abutment A2, the offset was measured to be around 40 inches. This offset was associated with damage in the bearings, as shown in the bottom pictures. Uh, at the location of the abutment, at, bo at the location of both abutments, the bearings uh, had extensive damage and they seemed to have uh, failed in shear. While interestingly, at the location of the piers, uh, the bearings seemed to be intact, but the bearing connection, the bolted connection to the girders, was the one that had failed. Uh, indicated that there was probably tension uh, apart from shear of the connection. Another type of damage that was observed at this bridge was the uh, breaking of the longitudinal strainers, as can be seen in the top pictures, top left picture. Uh, in addition, there were uh, there were some cracks and damage in the abutments, indicated that uh, there was a longitudinal impact of the bridge on the uh, abutment during the dynamic shaking. Also, buckling was seen at internal girders, as buckling of stiffness was seen at internal girders and at the external one. Uh, probably again due to impact or um, a sudden um, uplift and then drop down on the abutment seats again so a very dynamic uh, phenomenon uh, and uh, the last type of the failure was observed in the piers which uh, was seen to have significant cracking uh, at certain locations so many of the investigated bridges close to Nishihara village seem to have been damaged due to two different effects. First, the dynamic shaking, and second, the large ground deformation associated with landslides. Another in interesting bridge, uh, again in Nishihara village, in the, in, in the Nishihara area, was the Kuwatsuru Bridge, which was constructed in 1997, and it is a cable state bridge a very complex structure with a horizontal curvature and with uneven spans. This bridge was designed to pre copy GRA specifications and was later retrofitted following the revised after Kobe earthquake specifications. So, as you can see in the bottom uh, picture here, the joint was seemed to have to be intact, uh, but then when we uh, when the team examined the bearings below there was significant damage there and uh, the restraints again were were intact the longitudinal ones uh, but again the friction bearings were damaged and and the concrete below it so the base indicated that probably there was a again most likely an uplift there uh, associated and together with the longitudinal motion uh, actually this uh, uplift or vertical motion of the bridge can also be seen can uh, by by the fact that these other restraints here which allowed for horizontal uh, movement of the bridge but not vertical actually deformed the connection here so that's another indication that there was vertical motion of the bridge as, as well uh, th that also caused um, damage to unseating the devices and uh, to the to cable themselves um, uh, another type of damage is that um, 
the bearing the bearing connections were uh, damaged uh, also the location of the pylon as can be seen here on the right side so uh, the bridge actually seemed to have became to have become unbalanced at some point during the shaking probably when the tension in the cable was lost and that resulted in a very unstable structure which um, caused a lot of damage in the connections at the pylon and at the abutments and eventually uh, uh, led the bridge to reach another point of equilibrium and stability which was exactly on top of the shear keys so here you can see initial position of the bridge was there was here then the bearing broke and the bridge was later um, was later stopped on top of the uh, of the shear keys uh, the other abutment and you can you we uh, a large offset a significant offset was measured and observed um, you can see here on top the actually the offset of the deck and then at the same location but below the bridge again the offset laterally and vertically the significant damage in the bearing and since the bridge after it became unbalanced uh, was later uh, 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 later stopped on the shear key it actually caused significant damage in the shear key and the last uh, type of damage was on the abutment itself as can be seen by the exposed reinforcement here which indicated that during the shaking there also was also impact of the deck on the abutment the last area the team visited was located close to Aso Mountain uh, and particularly Minami Aso Bridge was investigated. This bridge was constructed in 1971. It was retrofitted with buckling restraint braces and longitudinal dampers and it was a single span with a length of approximately 111 meters. So um, as you can see in the pictures uh, on the bottom, uh, at, abut at the north abutment uh, there didn't seem to be any significant damage. However, investigation of the uh, south abutment uh, showed that there was significant damage of the connection of the dampers to the abutments on both sides of the bridge. This is interesting because those um, dissipation devices were designed to uh, improve the performance of the bridge in longitudinal direction however they failed due to lateral displacement of the bridge and this actually indicates the need for design for future designs of such uh, connections to be able to tolerate uh, the uh, displacements of the bridge in both directions the last bridge that we visited and it was in the same area in Aso, close to Aso mountain is the Aso Ohashi bridge this bridge was constructed in 1971 it is um, it consists of a truss deck Langer bridge span and four more span uh, with steel girders so in total five spans with a length of 111 meter again so this bridge uh, actually was in uh, in an area where there was extensive landslide again as can we see in the photos at the bottom and this extensive landslide seemed to have caused a uh, collapse of all the um, steel girder spans as well as the trust deck span uh, and leaving only two remaining abutments abutment eight abutment two and abutment one uh, and a collapsed span um, so you can see at the bottom the team standing uh, on abutment one and investigated the uh, the failure of the bridge. Now summary of observed failure modes, as was uh, showed in uh, as was shown on uh, on the previous slides, uh, bridges surveyed included eye girder steel bridges, arch bridges, cable state, truss deck Langer bridge and RC hollow slab bridge with broken columns and different failure modes were observed. Uh, the damage to most of the bridges seemed to have occurred due to intense shaking and in some cases due to combination with the extensive ground deformation associated with landslides. 
Um, so these two effects are very, very important. The typical observed damage pattern included damage to the bearing and bearing connections due to significant longitudinal or lateral displacement. Again, damage to bearings and bearing connection, but this time due to the uplift in the curved steel bridge and the cable stayed bridge. Damage to shear keys and longitudinal strainers. Buckling of steel girders, stiffness and flanges, most likely due to uplift followed by impact of the girders on the abutment seats and due to longitudinal impact of the girders on the abutment back walls so due to this dynamic effect from the impact significant lateral displacement of expansion joints and back walls of abutments and cracks at the bottom of piers under the pier pile cap connection was also observed with total collapse occurring only in a few cases some of the lessons learned might include the following. Partial retrofitting of a bridge uh, is definitely better than not retrofitting at all, but this should be followed by a full retrofit as soon as possible. Uh, and all components in the load path should be strengthened accordingly, starting from bearings, columns, footings, piles, and pile cars. Next, uh, corrosion and locking up of steel pin bearings can significantly affect the dynamic response of a bridge by changing the intended load path. So this may, for example, increase the inertia loads on certain components, such as adjacent bearings, leading to their failure. So in this case, proper maintenance is of utmost significance. For certain types of bridges, bearings and their connections should be designed for uplift or combined uplift and lateral displacement, which currently on uh, in the design guidelines is not happening uh, bridges with rocking columns can sustain large residual displacements and potential stability if the shear keys at the abutments fail and there is no other restoring mechanism another important uh, lesson in my opinion is that Extensive landslides that occurred in Kumamoto Prefecture had a detrimental effect on highway bridges and this widespread damage indicates the need for better understanding of landslides and triggering criteria, extensive evaluation of the probability of slope instability and investigation of landslide effects on structures. Uh, another thing has to do with the cable state bridges which uh, in case that they have uneven spans and horizontal curvature, that can have a very complex dynamic behavior. They can even become unbalanced if uplift occurs during shaking and cable tension is lost. And this unba unbalance results in overstressing of certain cables and damage to different components of the bridge. Last, uh, longitudinal restrainers and energy dissipation devices, which are designed uh, for uh, improving the performance of the bridge in longitudinal direction should also be designed and installed so as to accommodate simultaneous imposition of large relative displacements in the transverse direction. I would like to acknowledge the Earthquake Engineering Research Institute, the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering at the University of Nevada, Reno and the Ambacle, the Federal Highway Administration and Sheila Duwadi, all the members of FHWA reconnaissance team and our hosts, um, the National Institute for Land and Infrastructure Management and the Public Works Research Institute of Japan. And special thanks to Hoshikuma-san, Unjon-san and Shirata-san for hosting us. Any opinions, findings, conclusions or recommendation in this presentation? Are, uh, are mine and do not necessarily reflect the views of the rest of the team or the sponsors. Thank you for your time.